All praises to Yahweh, but Hashem, Yahweh Shai, but Hashem, Makak, Adash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on Isaiah chapter 14, and going into how the king of Babylon that he mentions in this is Esau, right? He's not talking about Nebuchadnezzar, he's talking about the Edomites, right? And I'm going to go into it. This is Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So just, just that alone lets it be known that it's not talking about the Babylon, the ancient Babylonians. Because we never took the ancient Babylonians over. They was taken over by the Persian Empire. Right? And then after that, the Persian Empire was taken down by the Greek Empire. And then after that, the Greeks turned into... um, It, it became... It, they got overtaken by the Roman Empire. And all them times, the Israelites was underneath all of those empires, man. Since the time of King Solomon, we haven't really been in a truly established kingdom for our nation, man. We've had little kingdoms here and there, but we've never had a time... We was properly doing our thing without going off because we had the moors. We had times where we was in charge, but all them times we was following after other ways. So them ways was destined to fall anyway. Verse three, and it shall come to pass in a day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein they was made to serve. Now this is a future prophecy, and pro we can let, we can see it, man. Let me go to this. I wanted to try and keep it in that chapter, but this scripture is gonna help. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So we're waiting for we're waiting as Israelites for the day where we get saved from the hands of our enemies, man. And Luke the fourth chapter also speaks about these kind of things. Luke 4 chapter, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because you have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You have sent me to heal the broken hearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. And to set them at liberty. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And this is what the Israelites of the elect are hoping for. Which ultimately really. Every Israelite is hoping for salvation from the hands of Esau. But loads of different Israelites are going about it. In different ways man. Right, you've got all these people that don't want to accept that they're Israelites and want to think that they're all things. A lot of these Negro Latinos and Native Americans, they want to think that there's something else. So they're trying to go about their own righteousness and not seeking the righteousness of the Lord, of the Lord Yahweh. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 4. In fact, I'll go verse 3 again. And it shall come to pass in a day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard money wherein thou was, was made to serve. That thou shalt take this proverb, that shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How have the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? Yahweh have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people with a continuous stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and unhindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fair trees rejoice at thee. Now, the, the Babylonian emperor wasn't, wasn't, wasn't so wicked that it was destroying trees, right? It wasn't like that, man. The Babylonian emperor wasn't like that. In fact, when we was in the Babylonian empire, they didn't have a problem with us calling ourselves Israelites. They didn't have a problem with that. They wasn't trying to make up ways to, for us to say that we're not Israelites and coming up against us just because we were saying that we're Israelites. They were coming up against us because our ways were perverse to their ways, were, were, were diverse were contrary to their ways, but they wasn't coming up against us because we were the Israelites. Verse 7, they were, it was the ways that we were living and that we didn't want to bow down to them that they had a problem with. But they didn't have a problem like they do now with us even saying that we're Israelites. But Esau did though, and Esau does. During the time of the Greek Empire, it was Esau that was making us, be, that made us become Hellenized. And right now, it's Esau that doesn't want us to say that we're Israelites. He'll happily say, let us say that we're anything else. But doesn't want us to say they were Israelites, man. Verse 8. Yea, the fair trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, 
no fellow has come up against us now. You can look on the internet and you can see that when Esau goes out into the world, he destroys whole environments, man, to the point where animals have to change their habitat, right? There's shows on Netflix about them cutting down trees, just cutting off loads, cutting down loads of trees in Canada, buying buying out land and like renting out land, and then they might have a six month period to cut down as many trees as they can within that. Buying big machines that are used to to move lumber from one part of the one part of the forest to another part of the forest, man. Esau does that. Esau is known for destroying the atmosphere and destroying the environment, man. The Babylonian Empire wasn't known for that. The ancient Babylonian Empire. Verse 9, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even the chief ones of the earth. It have raised up the, it have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And that's going into how every single nation is going to come up against Esau, man. Right? Every single nation is going to come up against these Edomites to make them get destroyed. And that's according to Revelation 18, man. And, and scriptures in 2nd Ezra's. That speak about all these nations that are going to shoot arrows at, at Babylon. And going into how all the, all the other nations are going to say, let the weak say, I am strong. Right? Verse 10. They that, they that speak, they shall, and they shall speak unto thee and say, art thou become as weak as we? Art thou become like us? And Esau is used to being proud, man. Like, I personally, and this is just my own personal belief, man. I personally think that these Edomites like to go around. And do all that Karen stuff to try and test and see if they've still got the power and the rulership of the world, man. Because they'd know if they're not in rulership that they could never try all that Karen stuff and all that. Let me speak to your manager. All that you're not gonna have a job tomorrow. Where they try and walk, when they be walking on the street, proud as hell and be thinking that you're gonna dive into the road to get out of their way. They try and do all of that stuff to try and test and see if they ain't got the power, man. And if a Jake doesn't move out of the way on one situation. Then they quick time bounce out of the way before there's any contact, man. Because these Edomites are really weak demons, man. And they're antagonistic freaks. They're antagonists. They're, they're Karens. They're demons. They're annoying. They're, they're troublemakers. And the world is going to be a much better place when they fall down, man. It's clear that, it's clear that the world wouldn't, wouldn't just be boasting and thingy, like getting hype about the ancient Babylonians falling down. They wasn't that they wasn't nowhere near as bad as Esau, man. They wasn't nowhere near as wicked as Esau. Nebuchadnezzar was built was bringing was bringing up, bringing up prophets, that what that was helping him, man. He he loved he loved Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar loved Daniel, man. He loved Daniel. He was upset when Daniel was gonna be um when Daniel had to get put in the lines. Then he was upset, but he was like, they're going my people are gonna have a problem if I don't break the rule. And he was happy when Daniel didn't fall down, man. But when you read the scriptures, Esau is always in the mix trying to get at Jacob. Always. From the book of Genesis and beyond. To, 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 to things that we can see in now in the earth to see that Esau is always against us, man. Yet people are trying to say that that's talking about um, the Bab ancient Babylonians. It's, it's ridiculous, man. Let's get this. Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 3. Fact, verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And Mount Seir is talking about Esau. And say unto it, Thus saith Yahweh power. Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. I will stretch out my hand against thee. And I will make thee most desolate. I will, I will, I will lay thy cities waste. And thou shalt be desolate. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and to shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity at the end. It did, the Babylonians, the ancient Babylonians, didn't have a continual perpetual hatred against us. Because otherwise they wouldn't, have been, they wouldn't have been raising up Daniel, would they? But Esau has always been against us, man. Always. Literally, oh, there's never been a time where Esau has not been trying to backstab us and trying to destroy us as a nation. No matter how much he smiles in your face, he's always out to get you, man. Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So when you're hearing about these in Isaiah 14th chapter, don't make these Christians try and lie to you 
and make you think that he's talking about something that's already happened. No, he's talking about what's going to happen to them. This is talking about what's going to happen to all you Edomites, man. No matter what f fake belief system you try to give yourself. Oh, I'm not. I'm not an Edomite. I'm a Buddhist. I'm not. I'm not an Edomite. I'm a. Um, I'm just a. I'm just a banker. No, you're an Edomite. You're always an Edomite first, man. All of you Edomites. Isaiah to the fourteen, and verse four. In fact, I already read that. So lucky. Let me let me go verse seven. The whole earth is at rest and it's quiet. They break forth into sinking, and the world is going to be a much better place when there's no more Edomites in power. Right? It's clear. That's clear, man. Nobody else is causing more damage to this earth than Esau. So what are people talking about when they're trying to make this thing beyond some ancient thing that hasn't that's already happened? No. This is getting ready to happen. Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Even the chief ones of the earth. It have raised up it have raised up their thrones, all the kings of the earth. All they all they shall speak unto thee. All thou shalt speak and say unto thee, Art thou become as weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought to the grave, and the nose of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Now who's more proud than Esau? Verse 12. Verse 12. How art, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which still is weak in the nations? And Esau is the main one weak in the nations. He's the one setting up different rules in people's society and telling them what to do, drink, making them drunk with wine, right? He's the one doing that, man. He's the one making people live the most perverse way because, according to the scriptures, he's the most wicked person. And then when you have to, when you say, when you understand that the Edomites are the most wicked nation, then you have to look out into the world and see who's the most wicked people in the world. Then when you put two and two together, you'll get four, and you'll realize that the Edomites. Are these people that are calling themselves Caucasian, man? Clear as day. They're the Edomites, man. Verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. Now who's the one that's saying that? Isn't that Esau? Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar already got taken down when he tried to get proud, man. He got taken down when he was trying to be proud, right? And then he humbled himself afterwards. Esau hasn't humbled himself. Esau is clearly going a war, man. When when with how he's doing things, he's going on a mad one. This this whole thing with um this um this uh German geezer, this um GTR geezer, you know, that guy, right? And then his mate, they're lunatics, man. They're saying that we that the Bible's um fake news. They're saying that they can do whatever they want. They're thinking that they can do whatever they want to do, man. Verse 14, I will send above the he heights of the clouds. I'll be like the most high. Yet thou shall be brought down to the yet thou shall be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. In fact, let me prove quickly. Right? That Esau is like that, man. That's things that he says about Esau when it talks about it talks about the door of Babylon. Give me one second. Isaiah chapter forty-seven and verse one: Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin door of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O door of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no one be called tender and delicate. Now, who's the who can the, who is the door of Babylon? Let me let me quickly show people that don't know. <clears throat> Psalm 137 and verse 7 Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem Let me read it again Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem Who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed Happy shall he be that reward thee as thou hast served us Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones Against the stone. So what are these people talking about, man? Esau is the door of Babylon. Right? They're the ones that are proud beyond measure. Let me quickly jump to a point.
Isaiah to the 47 and verse 7. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. So thou didst not lay these things to heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. So that's Esau, man. Esau is the one that thought that he was never going to fall down. That thought that he was just going to be the man. Thought that he was just going to be able to like have all these scandals going on forever. Thought that he was going to be able to have us all tagged up and bagged up. And be able to make Hunger Games be real in real life, man. That's what Esau would do. He'd be making some kind of person of interest, Hunger Games, Squid Games type of lifestyle for every single civilian, man. Every single so-called civilian. That's what Esau would want to do. Just have us running around like it's Purge and having like game shows where we run around executing each other, man. That's what kind of world Esau would want to have. So they can take that karagma and shove it as far as I'm concerned, man. And Lord will, I stay in that same mindset all the way up to the end, man. Because I couldn't think of nothing worse than having a, a demon like this put a karagma in you and be able to control what you think and be able to monitor your speech. Isaiah 14 and verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall not really look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did a shake kingdoms? Now, Esau is that person that people are going to be looking at sideways once he's no longer got the riches. Let me quickly get a scripture on that. Once Esau has no longer got these riches, man, because the only reason why anybody talks to an Edomite, let's be real, man, it's not because they're nice people. It's not because they're kind-hearted. It's because of money, man. The only reason why on a mass scale anyone's dealing with Esau is because they can get money from them. Because Yahweh's gave the ability to Esau to be the money man right now. But once Yahweh takes that away from these Edomites, they ain't going to want to talk to them. So watch chapter 10 and verse 30. The poor man is honored for his skill and the rich man is honored for his riches. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches? And he that is honorable in riches, how much more in poverty? Exactly. The Edomites are honored for their riches right now. But when they, when they lose the riches, how much more dishonorable are they going to be? And I said, let me just remember my thought. I said that the only reason why people talk to these Edomites is because of their riches. And now I'm going to go to Revelation 18. Let me go to this. Because it says that the other nations are going to be crying when it gets destroyed because they're going to be saying that they was made rich from it. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 18. In fact, Revelation chapter... Let me, let me go up a bit. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 15. The merchant of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Now are they going to be weeping and wailing saying, oh man, my, my, my good Edomite friend was in there. <laughs> you know, are they going to be saying that good Edomite friend was in there, that he's been burnt up? Oh, what about Alan and Davis? What they ain't going to be saying about that. Verse 16. And saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster and accompanying ships and sailors and sailors and as many as trade by sea to the far off and cried, <laughs> and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city because people was able to make money there verse 19 and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city when we're made rich so that's what they're going to be complaining about the money right but if people could still get the same amount of money without having to deal with ease so they would do it and guess what people are going to be able to have even more wealth than they had right now Without Esau, man, because Esau is a thief, right? We, what's the Israelites when we're in the kingdom? These these other nations are going to have to pay homage to us and they're going to have to be taxed. But it's not going to be nothing like what Esau does. The world's going to be better for us being in charge, man. Verse 19, and we're going to have the best portion as well. I've got to say that because I don't want these heathens to start thinking that they're going to be equal to us in the kingdom and they're not. And if they thought that they were going to be equal to us in the kingdom, they'd be helping us try and get the kingdom. So they already know that they're not going to be equal to us in the kingdom, man. Just like how we ain't considered equal to them now. Verse 19, And they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city 
when we were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour for in one hour she's made desolate. But they're going to be crying, but we ain't going to be crying as Israelites. Verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. So, there's that souls of balance, man. One people, a group of people are going to be crying. The heathens and the Israelites are going to be smiling, man. And you can already show, see the signs of that anyway, because a lot of these Christians, when they hear that America is going to get destroyed, they got the nerve to say, why? Why was it that? What's it done, mate? What do you mean, what's it done? It put our people in slavery. And then you've even still got Israelites that say that America is the best country in the world. How? How can you say that as an Israelite? That America is the best country in the world when it was founded off destroying your people, man. The tribe of Gad and all the other tribes and your own particular tribe as a, as a, um, if you are of the southern kingdom, man. How, how are you going to say that? That is the best country in the world. That's stupid, man. One second. <coughs> it's a lock here. As to the 14 and verse 16. They that see thee shall never look upon thee and consider, consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Because Esau's main thing is the sword, and the, and the sword he, that he has is what he's been able to get rich from, right? Because he's been able to threaten with the sword or use the sword. That's why he's in the position that he's in right now. But once that sword gets made blunt and all other nations show that they also can use the sword and he makes Esau cast out, then he makes Esau cast out Esau and Satan cast out Satan. These Edomites ain't going to have no more power anymore. Verse 17. That made the world as a wilderness. Now, did the Babylonians make the world as a wilderness? No, they didn't. The ancient Babylonians didn't make the world as a wilderness, man. That's, that's a lie. Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. So this is not, lets you know it's talking about a man. It's not talking about no no Lucifer when it says Lucifer. It's talking that that, that just means light bearer, man. Right? Esau is the so-called one that's got the light right now and, and he's able to make people drunk, but not with wine. The way that he's got people thinking is the right way to live is madness, man. This whole um, MAP thing. All of his little alphabet alphabet lusts that he's flying out on people. That shows that people are drunk with wine and he's made them feel like it's okay. Like they're not sinning by doing this. Because every wicked way is Esau's natural way of being, man. Verse 18. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory. Everyone in his house. Right? Which this is letting you know that all the other nations, after they've served captivity on the Israelites, they're still going to be subject to us. But it's not going to be like how Esau is. It's going to be they have to keep the laws. And that's according to Isaiah, the second chapter, the second verse to the fourth verse. And Micah, the fourth chapter, the first verse to like the fourth verse. Verse 19. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden on the feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The, ev the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children through the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Now let's see which nation is destined to be destroyed like that. Let's see. Because I already know the answer. But the most people know the answer to that now. That are about the scriptures for real. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. And the house of Jake shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For Yahweh have spoken it. So there we have it man. Right. Esau is going to be destroyed. Now let me jump to verse 21. And the saviour shall come upon Mount Zion. To judge the mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. So after Esau is destroyed. It's gonna be righteousness. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be like how this world is right now, man. Where you're worried about BS all day. Where you're wicked as hell, bogged out, stressed, anxiety, depressed. Don't want to be around people. Don't want to. Don't want to. Um. Don't want to. Having to work. Having to worry about money all the time. 
right? That's not going to be a thought process for any Israelite man. And there's a scripture on that, in fact. And I think it's Deuteronomy 15, where it says, except when there be no poor among you. Let me see if my memories serve me right. Let's see. Maybe not. Is it 14? I'm going to have to search that now. Otherwise, that's going to get on my nerves. It says something along the lines of except when they shall be no poor among you. Oh, there it is. This is Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 1. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release, and this shall be the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbour shall release it. He shall not he shall not exact it of his neighbour or of his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. Of a foreigner thou may exact it again, but that which is thine with thy brother, Thine shall hand, thy hand shall release. Verse 4. Save when there shall be no poor among you. For Yahweh shall greatly bless thee in the land which Yahweh have given thee for an inheritance to possess it. So there's going to come a time when there ain't no poor Israelites. There's going to come a time where there ain't such thing as a poor Israelite, man. And I'm going to end the lesson there. Isaiah chapter 14 is about the destruction of Esau and the destruction of the Edomites. Shalom to the nation of Israel. Shalom.